Subterranean Oiler. See what that does. <laughs> I actually am a little shocked that it compiled. Um, that's right. Dice of Terror to save. Okay. So moving down and up is doing something. Capping at 180 was a mistake. Uh, huh. So I guess... That's, so zero seems to be looking straight ahead. Then it seems to increase as I look down. Uh, for some reason, I thought zero would be. Uh, for some reason, I thought zero would be looking at the ground, but that actually doesn't make a lot of sense now that I think about it. So really, what we want a, like a negative. We want a negative 80 to a positive 80 or something like that. I should. Um, I know other programmers who freak out at magic numbers in the code. Um, I'm just gonna... Um, but I think that's a... I think worrying about that is kind of a vestige from back when compilers were slow. Um, if you're the one programmer working on a project Some weird kind of thing going on here. Let's, let's debug that. I think if you're the one programmer working on a project um, like this, uh, it's fine to just edit your numbers in the code. It's got live updating and everything. Uh, I do, once, once I find myself editing a number a lot, I tend to move that, or I expect to edit that number a lot. I move it into the inspector, into a public variable that I can put in the inspector. Um, but uh, for something like a, this, where I think, you know what, I don't think that's going to change much. That's different. One of you guys in the comments already knows what I'm doing wrong. Not obvious to me. This is going to be a quaternion, so I'm not even going to be able to read it and see if it's kind of the right idea. It's actually easier looking at the inspector. I know. I bet I know what's happening. I bet when the Euler is going across the threshold, 
zero threshold, I bet it's jumping to 360 and then getting clamped. Uh, so... I am going to, so a couple ways I could deal with that. One is I could have some kind of variable I maintain that has the pitch and convert that to the right number. Um, I'm going to be cheap, so I'm going to go back to what, what I had before. And, uh, and put that hinge in that I was talking about. And that hinge will just serve to... Let's see if then find child won't work. All right, let's do the variable. First person variables yet. Uh, private stuff. Private float. First person pitch. that it will go back to the negative 85 to 85 and then that'll get converted correctly I believe when it gets converted from an oil from Euler angles into a local rotation but it won't confuse the future the next frame Yeah, and uh, at this point, looking up and down could be a delta on the character's rotation. Um, i put that back in if I start rotating the character again. If you could see the... In fact, I think boost probably is not working right now because I'm not rotating the character. The boost probably uses the character's rotation as the, as the way to rotate, so I'll need to fix that. Okay. 
it's uh, working surprisingly well though. Yeah, I've been playing with the mouse. Let's switch to the switch to the gamepad. I'm liking it. Alright. I think that was a pretty good stream. I think, uh, oh, you know what? I will show you guys a little bit of NGUI while I'm here, because now that we've got this first person mode, it'd be nice to uh, be able to switch to it without, um, without, uh, without pressing a secret hotkey. So I'm going to add it to um, the player preferences in the pause menu. So, Save the project and apply our character settings. Yeah. And actually, is anybody still watching? No, oh, people are still watching. All right. I will do it. Okay. So, um, as I was telling Carl a little bit earlier today, and and is is a pretty solid thing. Uh, I mentioned I was using it. A lot of people recommend it. A lot of people hate it. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I, although I wasn't happy with uh, the time I had to spend getting it up and running. Um, now that I know it and and am getting familiar with it, I'm liking it a lot better. Um, so yeah, and, and GUI, uh is if you're familiar with Unity and moving stuff around in Unity, and particularly using its animation system, NGUI sort of fits that fits that paradigm very well, because um, the, the the objects you move around in, in NGUI are just like or and interact with in NGUI are kind of like moving around objects and stuff in uh, in Unity. It's just on a just on a different layer. Um, so like. Uh, here's my interface, which is just it's just a collection of Unity objects in 2D. A lot of a lot of which come with NGUI. Um, uh, the difference is they're on this UI layer. Um, so the 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 NGUI camera is rendering is always looking at the UI and rendering that, and uh, the regular camera is looking at the world and rendering that. So the pause menu. Options. Uh, switch to an isometric view. That's backwards. There. So let's take all of these and make some room for a new checkbox. Duplicate one of them. And just to get the... It would be nice if, uh, like Flash, it had some kind of um, button you could press to uh, spread out your menu items evenly. As far as I know, it doesn't have something like that, so I'm just going to look at this one, which is at negative 85, and this one, which is at negative 41, and say, okay, so there's, a, there's about a 44 point difference between them, which would put this at uh, negative 3. Is that, is that right? No, at 3. Right.